You have created a monster and it will destroy you. She's alive! Alive! I am Dracula. Live for the uh, third special bonus episode of Monster Manor um, here at the wonderful uh, cafe, Jonesy's Cafe, part of Coffee Shop of Horrors. Um, who are you? You left me on the freaking parking lot all day. Best. That's Boris. We might see him in a little while. Um, and Tylenol, Motrin, well, that's some Tylenol, Motrin, two Motrin, and two Tylenol. Do I take all of those? So yes, we are at the Tavares location of Coffee of Forest, helping out Nick and Matt um, with all the stuff. And yes, we are. We are. are getting our, our painkillers in because we're all show. Yeah. Me, especially Forrest. Yeah. Forrest creates a lot of pain. Yeah. But he, he might he might be able to You told me you told me there was a there was a restraining order about Forrest and I see him across the bar. Forrest can hear you you know why Forrest can hear this he's not that far away. Oh sorry Stay in your box at the bar Yes. Introduce hey. your guest. Who are you? I don't, I don't remember who you are. Are you saying I'm not a promo in the Sausage King of Chicago? <laughs> no. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, this is the man who, who uh, unfortunately had to take the first episode of Monster Manor. The, Work out awesome. all the work out all the bugs with awesome. But um, yeah, we we know uh, James Michael Roddy from a lot of are you, are you, are you, I, I'm worried about it. No, no, no. He's my I, friend too, so I have to like, I twisted my knee yesterday, so it's one of those things that like, oh yeah, I'm getting older. Oh, yeah, I have Motrin, so I should be fine. You remember all those times when we were making home movies and that sort of thing and, and doing stunts and crap calls? I do. It's like, we're going to be okay. Oh, yeah. I, I, I was telling you earlier today, gosh, 16, 17, we were doing a Christmas movie called Home Movie Action Thing, and I was like, oh yeah, I can I can bounce off that car. It looks so easy. It right? did, and you know, it hurt a little then, but now you realize like, that might have that might have been bad. Yeah. And then I, I you know, I went to Universal, and I was one of the Ghostbusters. And looking back on it, uh, we were running around on Mars with sixty pound packs. Oh yeah. So I'm sure that did wonders for the lower extremities. But we were still Ghostbusters. So yeah. Awesome. But totally off topic, does it annoy you any when you hear Bill Murray saying, oh, that pack was so heavy? And you guys were out doing it every day, every hour for not weeks, but the last How long were you a Ghostbuster? Uh, I was a Ghostbuster for about eight months, and then I like, moved from being a Ghostbuster to being a Walter, who was the bad guy. Um, and then I was a Blues Brother, I was a Dolly Do Right. Uh, no, it's funny, like the Bill Murray thing, it always makes me laugh because I'm like, yeah, no one yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think he had a lot easier to work with. Yeah. So there was a lot of running back with Bill Murray. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Bill Murray can do no wrong. Exactly. We give him a lot of, I mean, shoot, even the producers and directors gave him tasks because he literally wouldn't even read his script. Right. It'd be like, most of his stuff was in. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. 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 I didn't even know he was going to show up. Yeah. And then they were like, oh, the hurricane's here. Yeah. And, and he's just, you know, uh, it's great. 
it's somebody that is, is super super talented but doesn't take themselves too seriously. Wow. Really seems to have fun with life. Well, always does like, 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 shows up at like frat parties and shows up like an hour and he starts to start to what, what a great life. Yeah. To take your celebrity and be like, I'm nobody. I yeah. we're, we're all the same. We're flesh and blood. I want to be him when I grow up because the fact that he just he has fans the world over and he'll just walk into a restaurant and take a crowd of guys and make them out. That's that's humanity. That's fine. He just has no there's no uh, false air about him. Yeah, that's awesome. But we're here to talk about you too. Oh yeah. Because I love you. <laughs> Bono. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, me. Oh, you okay. well. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I was so fortunate to be your first guest. Um, you know, and I, I have a podcast. Perfect. I have now. Once we raise, say it here on air. Twenty thousand. I said these are Mike Monster kids. No. You may have to have some because no. this is the premiere podcast not my experience oh my for. That's why you liked it. It's every show I watch, it brings a smile to my face. It makes me it makes me nostalgic. It also makes me you the back. You're one of those guys that you, you know what it means to hold something in your hand and have that connection of No. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. 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 I want to jump. Lost for kids is now. Oh, wow. Take it. Take it from Well, at least come with me. You know, we love having you. You guys really go to the first guest. And it was such an honor. You know, we've been playing that for a while. Yes. I just believe in you. I believe in the family. I believe in yourself. I hope you met before. And you're just a good man. You're a good friend. So, I think she's on Twitch. I appreciate it, brother. I really, really do. And you are such an emissary. With everything that you've done, I mean, the first time I knew of anything that you had done, it was Shark is Still Working. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure you get asked a million times about Shark is Still Working. Um, and for those of you who haven't seen our first interview, go back to the first episode and watch that because I don't want to bore you with, with the same information, obviously. But yes, what's that question? What boards? Um, how many times did they quit the die? And after the first one, did they like bring him back to life and feed him to sharks again? You know, because Quinn going to sharks like five, six times here. So how many, how many actors did they sacrifice for that shark? You know, it was a movie. It wasn't real. It was Robert real. Shaw, Robert Shaw didn't die in that. It, it was. Well, he's uh, dead though. Well, he is now. Yeah, but it wasn't the shark that killed him. It was I didn't know it was like after effects of the shark. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he. he that was a, that wasn't a real shot. Okay. He, he definitely sold. Yeah, that wasn't a that wasn't a real shark. Not a good shark. No, it was a good shark. It just wasn't real. Yeah. There's real shark in just like just like your your integrity. It's, it's, it's not, not real. real. It's not. Real. It, it looked good, but it's yeah, not yeah, that. But it's not real. But you put more integrity than salt water. It's gonna sink too. So. <laughs> yes. Is it true that that when the orca sinking and they were saying save the actors? Somebody said, hell no, save the cameras. That is an actual true story. Save the sound of one. Thank you. I'm uh, sorry for interrupting. No. Please. Would you like to join us? Okay. Now, see, it's your problem. The boys going to sit and, and be nice in the corner here. <laughs> Not over this. This is where it goes off the rails. If you guys don't know, this is Boris, but you do know. This is Boris. This is Boris. Boris, this is the world. Hello, world. Boris usually get get 15 minutes. You never get to sit with the guys. It's like Johnny being asked to come up with Johnny Carson. But first to make it hold him. You're like the Dean Martin. But not up. So or like um when Buddy Hackett come in drunk for the Carson show. It's always a good time. So we were talking about Jaws. Yeah. You've seen Jaws? Many times. So, uh, um, I actually bought a clip that I don't know if many people have seen. Uh, we did a thing that wasn't on the Blu ray, we did it just as a thing to put, and honestly, it's a thing we wanted to do. Right. It's called Jaws in 30 Seconds. Oh, yeah. So, yes. all of the 
all of the actors that we interviewed, we asked them to do their famous line of Jaws, and then we put it together. So it starts with John Williams doing the theme. Oh, perfect. And ends with Roy Shatter. It's 30 seconds. Well, let's take a look at this. Do we have that queued up and ready to go? Where do we look? We can look for it. Come on in the water. Look, I reported it to you, didn't I? What's the matter with my printing? Mom, can can I get my raft and go back out on the water, please? My boy is dead. Oh, do you know the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man, the Muffin Man? You heard your father? Get out of the water! Now! That's Mary Muffin. She broke my heart. <laughs> We're going to need a bigger boat. Back. And we're back. Yay! So yeah, that was just a fun little thing we did that primarily dressed as fans. But you know, that experience to me was the, the epitome of uh, just being a fan, getting the opportunity to interact with those people and give back. And so the reason we did it was honestly we wanted to hear those stories. So we knew there were other Jaws fans that would love to hear those stories, and we had the opportunity. Yeah. It, it was it was such a cool element. See, I mean, as far as documentaries go, that was really, really cool. Did you know, because most people have seen it now, did you know that that was going to be such a, a beloved thing? The behind the scenes and the, all the making shows? You, you know, it's interesting. Uh, when we started, uh, we hoped, you know, but we really, we weren't looking to make money. We, I had been hired to be a, a creative director for an event up on Martha's Vineyard that was celebrating the anniversary year of Jaws. So at first it was just going to be featuring all of the the, uh, the locals that were because one of the things that's really great about uh, Jaws is that Spielberg hired a lot of people from all the things that were real. Yeah, real. They and, are if at, and if you look at Spielberg's early career, everything from Duel to Jaws to Close Encounter, they're real people. Yeah. Sugarland Express. So I wanted to tell those stories, but then as it got bigger and bigger, we found like, well, let's just you know, not tell the story of the making of the movie because we thought that Morocco was really done that and done a really good job. Um, we wanted to look at the, the legacy of that film. And the impact of that film because when you talk to people, especially in the industry of horror or sci fi or fantastical, they all cite Jaws as the movie. So all of a sudden, we were interviewing the people that were the creators of Jaws, but then we also interviewed James Singer, Kevin Smith, and Robert Rodriguez, uh, all the people that all had the same story that I wanted to make movies when I saw Jaws. And then we even took a step further and interviewed a lot of shark researchers who were inspired to be marine biologists because of Richard Dreyfuss. Right. I thought, I want to be that guy. Right, right. So, um, but we had no idea. We're very thankful for the fact that it just got re-released on the uh, the 4K version of Jaws. You know that we're somehow associated with Jaws in any capacity. Just if you told a little six-year-old that saw Jaws for the first time, hey, this is what's going to be part of your trajectory. I would really do it. I'm just thankful. For you. Was that the first really big project that you were involved with? Um, from a film standpoint, yeah, you know, I had I had done a lot of uh, theme park design. I, I came into Universal. You know, I became I was an actor first, but I, I because of my love of film and my love of specifically the horror genre, I was brought in as a consultant for Halloween Horror Nights, and then worked my way through that to where I was designing a and I was a creative director. Right. So I was doing that, and that was that was always so much fun. Um, but this was an opportunity, like yeah. This was this was the wow. We we made something that is going to be there as long as people want to see it. So yes. you know, to me, like that's the check. Okay, I, I, I've done something. Else. You know, and that's why I didn't do it alone. And all those people that gave us their time. Yeah. Same thing with Monster Kids. I did that for the yeah. same reason. I love those things. And all of those people that gave me their time, you know, it wasn't a money making endeavor. It wasn't a money making enterprise. You know, your Rick Bakers, your Greg Nicotero's, all of those people recognized that. Okay, 
Uh, here's somebody who wants to take care of us and they're not going to make fun of this. It really is simple. That's a lot better. Yeah. Yes, Laura. Laura's got something serious question. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that was really hard. Yes. I know you talked on the last show about California, you know, meeting that in that was the menace for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like for me. Thank you for the comment. Oh, yeah. But for me, it was like over at the universe studios. I did not know. And I'm sure you were the same way when we showed up that first day. And you looked at the list and it said, Back to the Future not working, Scott not working, Jaws working for now. Oh, it changed. So I I wrote Jaws opening day. Yeah. Back to your story. Yeah. Jaws. Yes, sir. I wrote the original Jaws. Uh, all four of us did. Our friends with Lorraine Gary. Oh. So yeah. she was in the front of the boat, and it worked pretty well. And I will tell you, the shark comes up and grabbed the front of the boat, the pontoon, and then it pulled it backwards. And then there was um, the end of it. It wasn't anywhere near the dock. There was none of the, the cable or any of that. They blew up the shark, and it was this big geyser of blood, and it just kept going and going and going. And it was very graphic, and there were shark pieces. I thought it was amazing. And then, like, we got out, and then we went to do something else, and we were like, let's go get Jaws again. And then they were like, that's oh, okay. And then it, it really worked again. But yeah. they said that with Motor Street, they had the problem with the, the hydraulics of them or something that we pull them back and break it or something. Well, like. I also have heard that there was a, and again, this is well, theme park. Well, no, but this is theme park appropriate, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that the shark actually didn't hit the container it's just supposed to grab, and it actually shot up and over into the floor. So that's when it was like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Right there. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, I hate when people say, oh, that shark looked terrible. Well, I think the, the shark in Jaws is probably one of the coolest creations that, you know, on the film. Is it exactly like a shark? No, but it is a character. Yeah. It is an absolute character, just as much as a It was a monster, and like Dracula, you know, and squid and 20,000 leagues of the sea. Yeah. But well, everybody says the shark all over. But well, nobody went to the beach that year. No. no. They all stay on the sand going, I'm good. Oh, did, um, where would did you stand on the bonus note that Spielberg cut out the scene and uh, pushed him again? And the guy that you saw the shark come up and eat him. Yeah. There's like pictures of it. Um, there's no film, but they have the pictures like the shark with Kindler in the mouth. And yeah. It's more graphic. It's Steven Spielberg said, and and the one that. Would you prefer that gross scene, or would you like the better where the shark no, pop up later? The way that that film is structured and the pieces and parts that you see lead up to the terror. So that when you finally see the shark, you are terrified. Mm -hmm. I love. I mean, I've seen that picture, right? And the shark is really popping over. It's, it's a terrifying photo. But when you're watching the movie and you can see the fin, the role, yes. that is more realistic. Yes. And the guys are blood, and you're like, oh. Yeah. And then you know, shortly after that, you see. Coming through the water when it attacks the, the coach yeah. in the boat, you know, Teddy Gross was there. And you're like, wait a minute. So by the time that, that thing shows up on the back of the boat and just comes up, I remember it still as a kid. Like, that was the most terrible thing yeah. I've ever seen. And the fact that you couldn't know where it was, it could be right there. Yeah. You know, that was something that just happened to that. Yeah. That and, and the jump scare with Ben Gardner. Oh, Ben Gardner. That jump scare. <laughs> Makes no sense. Yeah. But I mean, you know, people like how you spit the it's like it's just his body, right? You yeah. know, it's not a decapitated head, but when you're a kid, you're like, hey, yeah. the shark bit off his head. It's like that's not really what happened. Yeah. It's one of the most effective even now you can't Spielberg and, and, and Bill Butler and the entire team are so amazing. Like even when you watch Jaws, I've seen Jaws well over two hundred. It's still so hard to pinpoint exactly when that head's coming out. And yeah. then, you know, John Williams with the violin, it's like, it's so crazy. It's so yeah. Cool. yeah. You don't even know it's filmed in the pool. No, it's filmed in the pool. It's filmed in the pool. in the water with something. So, okay. So, if you watch the shark, it's still working. We were exhausted about our animals. So, we actually found the pool in that now. It was done in uh, Verna Fields Park. She edited in her pool house. So Eric and the gang, when we went there, um, the house was now in the house, invited us in, we went into that pool, you know, we have pictures of us coming up out of the water in that pool, but she 
Turner Field's flatbed editor was still in the pool house. And they were filled with ends and pieces from sugar. Yeah. So we called Amber and Spielberg had a truck to pick that up. He had no idea what had happened. So that now it resides back in Spielberg. But yeah, I mean that it was done in in a in a pool in, in the valley, right? And, and basically to give the idea that it was salt water, they put some milk and little flecks of aluminum so that it, oh, it gleams yeah. like the salinity and everything. Yeah. They just kept drawing it like a Joe Alts had built a section of the a hole of the boat. They put it there and Kevin Pike, who later went on to do stuff like Back to the Future, amazing guy. He's the guy with the head just going and Spielberg and Cuban would just push it on the ground. Oh, so amazing. All practical. That's, so that's the beautiful thing. thing. Now they would just CGI that thing and make it look like you know, sea water. But back then you had to use the Right. <laughs> well, it's, it's interesting too. Like, I love a good shark movie, yeah. but I still like. Other than Meg, I thought Meg did a good job with the visual effects. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if I'd want to see. I want to see Jaws. No. Visual effects. I hope they, they redo it. It's it's not a movie that could be done and still have the charm. Right. To me, it's that practical effect. Right. And like you said, it doesn't matter that it doesn't look like a shark shark. It's Bruce. Right. You know, it is that specific face. And yeah. We've grown to love it. Yeah. Give it a level. I love it. And I, I don't think we could expect any kind of CGI from Spielberg on that. Like, he's already said, I'm not ever touching 41. 1941 with the strings, he says they will always appear in the videos. Well, you know, and I think he actually came back and said when he did the thing with ET, he was like, he wish he'd never done it. Yeah. Like, change the guns. That to was the, Toys R Us. That was the Toys R Us in the universe. Well, yeah, but still, it's like, you know. And at least we got both versions of the DVD. True. We didn't get the same treatment from from uh, <laughs> and by the way, George Lucas, let's talk about Indiana Jones. Yes. Everybody, um, like, <laughs> they're making it. You're, you're basing stuff like on images. Like, James Bingle is a good director. Yeah. Yeah, I was the first one that said it's Matt Spielberg. I'm like, what? Right? That yeah. doesn't feel right. James Bingle is an amazing director. We might be really surprised. We don't know. You know yeah. We don't know. But to hate it already. I, I don't too. know if you saw my post. Yeah. It's like I'm I'm dissecting it forensically. I want to see what's going on with it. But I'm intrigued. I think that they're gonna knock this one out of the park. I do too. I think I think, you know, I don't think again, you have been involved with movies. Like there's a lot. Nobody sets out to make a bad movie. Yeah. Nobody goes, you're going to make a bad movie. Um, and like, a lot of people don't like the name of the crystal spell. Yeah. Okay. They go, well, the, 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 the nuke in the lead line refrigerator. I'm like, did you forget that in you jump out of a plane yeah. and a rubber raft? Yeah. You either, you're either in it and just enjoy the ludicrousness of it. Yeah. You know. And again, it's never going to be the top Raiders because Raiders was the first. Yeah. But also, you began to draw his movie. Break out of the, the car. So you have to suck the ball. But he passed the, the seal. The seal, though. The seal though. So I thought the cup couldn't pass the seal because then Sean Connery would have dropped dead. Yeah. Because then the bull would come back. It might have extended you were a little bit of his life. Well, the boys don't care as long as Indiana Jones did have a support point. Yes. The crooked. The crooked that man took everything from me. And if you notice how to support the only man if you split the face, it would have to say Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want you to do the rest of this as well. What's the ball, baby? It's going to set this here. It's about the cloud. About cloud? Cloud, yes. It's going to set the here. The, 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 the doctor, Mar I, I think I was our underwear. I don't know that, right? I wore the midget on my head and no underwear. You took that midget. I did. It was a nice little man. I call him Stanley. Is that politically correct? No, I it's not. not. He's a little person. Well, technically, be he's nice. too tiny. Do we have the, the disclaimer? A, the disclaimer. The disclaimer. Oh, by the way, part of the disclaimer, anything come out of Morris's mouth, Morris is like, you know, Boris cancel culture gonna creep up his butt like hemorrhoids. So therefore, 
Um, I was gonna say the wrong thing. You're not gonna get out. Just so you know. How's the vodka? It's nice. <laughs> Actually, they're trying to root the boars. The boars make it hollow. They're trying to root. Yes, this is the second day. Boars supposed to be. Who, so now, who's to the interview? <laughs> They've been given. They take uh, kind of tank. So anyway, you, you built up the, the resistance. Yes. Biocane powder. Biocane powder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But quadrative. Um, yeah. Yes. The little hypno make it take tank. So we just. It's just right. Okay. See, we're just gonna go everywhere. With yeah, this. I knew we would. We're, we're friends just talking. And Boris. Yeah. No, no Boris read the book, uh, by the way, after the last show. Yeah. He was from Best to Make a House. And he read it. was a very interesting book um, for somebody who hadn't read it and considered himself masochist. Really? Yes, it was like just a new, and he loved us. So Boris saw the the one who did um, the 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 shark spoof. It's on the YouTube. Oh, all that jaws. Yeah, all that jaws. Jaws love that. Oh, thank you. We were kids. We just were. Like, mm-hmm. Nobody could tell us that we were doing anything. You were a pup. I remember the. the seven daughters love your jaws work. We love your jaws work because you made the book young. Yeah. And it the book. Still would we've allowed out in the movie. Yes. Like the Boris well, Hooper himself. dies in the movie. And the mayor's in the mafia. Yeah. And then Hooper sleeps with Brody's wife. Yeah. And Quint dies by uh, more of a Captain Ahab. He gets uh, in the, in the barrels and the cartoon, he gets all wrapped up and he gets pulled under the ground. And the book of the ending was kind of boring. Yeah, the like, shark just died. Brody's standing there like, oh, come yeah. the barrels are wrapped up. Bye bye. He just drowned. And it's like Brody looks under and saw yeah. that, yeah. But that, that nice thing. Like more finality than that. But if you think about it, Brody just chummed the water for like some other sharks. Yeah. Blowing yeah. up Jaws' head. Oh, well, that's, I think it was either a Craft magazine, which I love, you know, the part of John Severin. I used to always love that. Um, I think it was Craft that did the Jaws version that had the end shot of Brody and Hooper after they blew up the shark. It was a down view, a drone shot, and it's them. And Hooper says, you know, we have attracted every other shark for yes. 200 miles. And there's all these things that are coming towards us. Yeah. But Boris is jealous of your work. Boris wish he could have done like the sharks to work because his parents see that when he was a young boy. And Boris see like a couple years later and have to travel with him get the work so much. But learning about this, we see like like little documentary things we all went down. And it's like that's not Boris want to do. But then you got the chance to do it and talk to everybody. That's Boris jealous. Well, you're not dead. You can still do it. Have you know? I mean, you, I will. But do some later things. Well, she no, wishes me. No, she doesn't wish you were dead. Yes, she does. She could. She throw like things. What is that? The wishes? Well, go kill him. Oh, oh no! Here we go. I'm not gonna wish you dead, but I might make you dead if you're not careful. What well, little loud the boys can't so, hear. So, Hunter's Tale, one and yeah, two, now available on Amazon. Um, thank you for. Reading the book. It's nice, but most of them buy it actually because you know, Fence Mike doesn't realize he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and that, we like that. It's sitting up right in the corner. I share a lot of my things with Boris. Voluntarily or involuntarily. Well, you know, it's, it's fun to be like, like this uh, here at, at Josie's house. Right? Yeah. I had never been to Josie's so house. Kudos to you. And, and thank you, Josie, for letting yeah. us have that. Thank you, But this, this is now going to, I mean, I live in Winter Garden, so this is 30 minutes from me. Yeah. This will now be a at least twice a month come and just hang out because yeah. guys there's food there's I'll coffee there's there, food, but like it's done like we're in the Nostromo like there's yeah. it's just really cool somebody yeah. right new name is the bathroom I know that was it's also cool. right there you um but yeah, no, I mean, there's places like this where we can just kind of have, come and have our clubhouse. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm with Mark, and, and Mark's selling his book, which uh, yeah. here in Florida, which is amazing. And, yeah. you know, I did Undertale because I wanted to give opportunities to all my friends and designers yeah. to put their fiction out there and put their experience out there. So, yeah. um, we have two volumes, and, uh, you know, it's amazing. You're very collaborative, and everything you do, you're very much enjoying it. Yeah. Let's play. Let's yeah. have fun with this. Absolutely. You know, Mark was, was in your book, I knew that. Uh, we got to work together. Yeah. It was for a small project. But, yeah. but you, you know, like a Renaissance great. man, but you make movies. So, yeah, I'd love to talk about it. There's a thing I did this year. Um, basically, you know, uh, I, I realized that as a, as a little 
kid what I want to do with this movie. So, in the movie, I tried to look through the movie, and lots of kids are the movie. But I wanted to, you know, I wanted to like direct. So, I came up with an idea. I had an opportunity to film at an abandoned high school. So, I came up with a story called In Front of Stick. And you were kind enough, I needed some, a body to come through a window. and. And you put it together, and it looks amazing. I mean, you know, you've always been a great talk partner. I can call you at any time, just kind of go, hey, what the hell? Yeah, let's talk about this. And it's just so much fun. I'll bring you in front of that. We just finished the last shot, and we're almost done with all the post production. We're going to do festivals, and then, um, you know, check out the website, www in front of Sierra. And I wanted to show the trailer if you guys would yeah. like to see. Um, originally, originally this was uh, an opportunity, you know. Um, did, did you put in a shot for cinema for the fan passion? Not yet, I'm going to. Oh. Yeah. The boarders can't watch it. Yeah, I think we have, we have the mom. trailer queued up. You're good. Okay. Yeah, Are so, we ready to see the, the trailer? Let's see the trailer. So here's the trailer. You need to leave right now. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's coming soon. And uh, something that's really cool is um, I got the ability to draw Gwen Stevens is in it in a small role. And then we just filmed this yesterday. Uh, we have a guest appearance in the film in one of his first acting roles, uh, first speaking acting roles, is Sir Gregory Nicotero will be appearing in Inferno Obscura, which is so much fun. And, um, I can't wait for you guys to see it. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see it because I want to see how you turn that hastily made body into what it looks like on screen oh, because you great. sent me sneaks and I'm like this guy is a magician this, this can't be I think they took the actor and just threw him out no no that body worked well like that's the beautiful thing about having friends in the industry I asked you you're like hold on let me see and then that you're, the, you're the mad scientist who went and said all right this is don't don't bend this too hard and then I'm throwing it out windows so I threw it out a window like 10 times and then the only thing that yeah. It was great. No, it looked great. That's that's the beauty, and I wanted it to be practical. So, um, and really, the the, the 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 film is is a tribute to those things that I loved in the '70s, kind of like burn offering. And uh, imagine uh, those great haunted house that are just atmospheric, uh, filled with the energy, you know, and you're not really sure what's going on, but it's a fun ride and it stays with you. Out. But that's the thing is that the way that you shoot things, you have that sensibility. And it is very enjoyable to fans like us. I don't want to say our age group, because my kids like stuff like that. So it's just 
it's refreshing. And I like your style. I like the way that you that you and I hope we work together yeah, in the future. Because it was it was awesome what you did. What we're gonna do the Boris Yeah. We just yeah. yeah. gotta find a baby Boris. But the zoo is the so yeah. Boris will play itself. As a baby? Yeah. But we one man show Broadway. We just, just light them up and Boris them to do every live one. You mean oh, Broadway or Yes, yeah, yeah. Lord It's near the virus, it's like south of the virus, about about three miles. Right. In the woods. Tracks. In the woods. Yeah. yeah. With the murder shack. That's where actually it's called the murder shack theater. Murder shack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, the cool. That would be Yeah. But, uh, uh, just a bit of I, I want to bring it to the We also are getting the opportunity to come. October to be at a convention together, which you know, that's what it feels like right now. You know, the Phantasm, yeah. it, you know, and Phantasm helps sponsor some of that volunteer help. And I'm saying, you know, it's, it's a great time to be a fan. It's yeah. a great time meeting people like you. You're so kind, and your wife's so kind. And you know that I would work with you on anything. Um, and, you know, I, when you talk about my style, I'm, I grew up watching those Dan. Curtis Creepers, right? So it was Trilogy of Terror and Dead of Night, and then there was uh, Ghost Watch, the BBC yeah. thing, right? and Burnt Offerings, and, and then you know you meet you, you, your sensibility goes to uh, John Parker, yeah. who has a style and a purpose that just unfolds, yeah. and that's what I like. I find the, the fast editing stuff that when that's all it is, I, I kind of find like you know it's. Uh, it's sad because you know, it, it, it doesn't let you rest and really take in the experience. You know, if yeah. everything's a barrage, is that as fulfilling as the slow barrage? I play um, not, not in a bad way. I'm not saying it's too fresh. It does like something, but the TikToks, the Instagram, short break. Yes, yeah. and it's like we are free now to want the choppy ads. We, and you remember, like, in our lifetime, it was, wow, this new shaky cam. You remember those words? What yeah. was that, like, 89, 90? Oh, before that, that, it was uh, Sam Raimi. Uh, yeah, yeah, there was that. He was, like, the rarity. Then it was the rarity. Yeah. I mean, as far as that would be a scene set up, but now this gorilla filmmaking and stuff, bro, that is it. It's almost like when you see something that's got a good setup. Um, there was, um, and, uh, it'll come back to me. But there, there was a recent film that the setup, the slow burn of a, a long traveling shot down a hallway that switches and turns, and then you're looking at those things are very. And Jordan Peele has. It. Oh yeah, Jordan, Jordan Peele amazing. is an amazing visual storyteller. Um, but how rare is he? You know, you well, know. you know, I, it's funny because it's get out. I think it's amazing. Yes. Um, us is good. It, it wasn't, again, like I, I worry sometimes, like a filmmaker then gets trapped, right? Yeah. So us had to follow in the vein of get out. Yeah. Like everybody was just like, oh, what's the, what's the, what's the, you know, it's like the George Shyamalan. Yeah. You know, like, all of a sudden, all of M. Night Shyamalan say, like, what's the twist? It's like, can you just do a movie? Yeah. Um, but the yeah. thing I love, I mean, Jordan Hill's work that he did with Twilight Zone yeah. was amazing. Um, yeah, no, I think he really understands how to create dread. Yeah, you know, and true horror, not startled, not, not shocked. Yeah, horror. Yeah. It was one month, but maybe like, if you had to put classroom, maybe like ten years, and you wanted to turn them into monster kids, what? Three films you start them on to like get them into like the whole monster genre type of thing. Wow. Um, Frankenstein. Uh, Dracula might be over their heads. Because uh, Dracula really is a terrifying film. It, 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 That's another I, I would do one. I would do one movie. Like, I have it, that's why I love my Yeah. Because it's, it's the game. It's yes. funny, but it's scary, right? Having Costello and Frankenstein's Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters is, is genuinely scary. Yeah. 
the three films I would say Abbott Costello made for King Kong. And um, uh, you want to throw Harry House in there. And then Frankenstein, Abbott Costello made Frankenstein, and uh, King Kong. Those would be the three. So those like the gateway films to be kind of I think that covers the, the whole camp. You have a true horror, uh, not the horror of the Frankenstein. You have the safety that it's horror, but it can be fun in Abbott Costello. And then, you know, King Kong is just a fantastic one. Yeah. And again, the fact that somebody, the trickery there is that somebody actually had the patience and the discipline to manipulate something oh, yeah. to tell a story. Yeah. yeah, and it took yeah. so long to do it, right? Unbelievable. Um, well, we are already at the end of another 45 minutes, which wow. is crazy. Um, but yeah, I did want to talk to you about one other thing. It kind of comes off the board this question. Um, monster kids. This is something that I first saw a caught wind of when you were on, uh, when you were at uh, Illibration. Right. And I didn't get to see the whole thing there. But <laughs> what I saw was just incredible. And I saw some of the interviews that I found. I saw zoning out. It was one of those documentaries that sucked you in. Tell us your, your winging memories. You know, what are some of the highlights of shooting that, recording that, and wrestling for the story? Um, so, Monster Kids, what really was. I, I'm a monster. Okay? You're a monster. What, what that is, is somebody at a young age who discovered that there's this whole world of gods and monsters that they connect with. Yeah. And there's different reasons you connect with. It could be, you know, the fear that you have as a little kid, the, the things that are going on around you. It's, it's safe fear so that you can experience it, but know that. It's going to be all that. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, we had horror hosts that were our gateway that brought it in through comedy. I had Dr. Romero in camp. And it was, okay, don't be too scared. This is kind of a creepy old movie. But then I was a future kid. And okay, you know, and the black and white imagery. And then you had Famous Monsters magazine. And then as you got older, you had Gloria. And, you know, it's that group that uh, comedy. Of makeup artists, collectors, actors, um, that all were bitten by the club. And you know, I, the, the person that created the brand monster was a guy by the name of Dave who uh, writes for USA Today. He's the one that published all monster pets. So I, I contacted him. Like, yeah, so I, I contacted him. It's like, I'd like to make this documentary and his blessing. And then, you know, everybody I talked to, they were like, absolutely, I'll be a part of this. So we interviewed Rick Baker, Greg Nicotero, Tom Savini, Jones, uh, Alan Gillis, the list goes on and on and on. And basically about that, that love of the, the fantastical, sometimes spooky, sometimes terrifying, but the fantastical. And it, it really was the tribute to one man, his name's Bob Burns. And Bob Burns is the most first. Forrester Ackerman was our uncle, but Bob Burns was a kid that was right next to us playing the whole time. And, you know, Bob uh, was Tracy the Gorilla in Ghostbusters in 1970 on the TV show. And um, he's just the sweetest man in the world. Unfortunately, he just lost his wife, Kathy, who was amazing. But, um, so, you know, for me, that the most poignant thing was spending time with Bob Burns. Because Bob became a really good friend. And um, at the end of Monster Kids, there's a moment where, you know, Bob brings the, the time machine. So the wrap up is Bob turning to the camera at the end and going, Well, thanks, Monster Kids. Time for me to head on back. But he throws a kiss and he disappears in the time machine. You know, it, it really is trying to capture. I always that, that, that fun of liking stuff, being a fan, and you know, those films will always, you know, I ask so many, so many of the interview subjects that you feel like monsters are going to go away, it's probably deciding away, it's like, no, Shakespeare doesn't go away. 
these these stories connect with the youth. There's a bunch of kids being made right now that are watching the show. Like I, I would love, you know, that's the thing I do is like yeah, and like Boris, people like uh, creatures like Boris. Um, that is the fun of it. It's okay to like the absurd and because we're all a little bit absurd. And I think that that's the one thing about monsters is it always reached accessibility and inclusivity. Like, you know, uh, we didn't care. We didn't care that, you know, we were into monsters and everything like that. Who comes to the You like this monster better? I like that monster better. So there was no judgment about it. No. no. There were the, the, the playground arguments like whether he would Yeah. The monster. Of course, it always does. Yeah. We had that fight, actually. Uh, you made one. By coming in to, with the trade to fix to get something, and then Stanley has to go to the Avengers and the Yeah. This is serious. The most fractured guy then by default. I thought the werewolf was a trade or death. His was quite a big mistake to talk to the. But he lost in the round earlier. This is a bad thing. Well, I always, you know, I always love the idea of all of those creatures. That's why I love Frankenstein. And there's a short story in the first volume of Honor's Tale that's a continuation of the moment that Dracula and the Wolfman, yes. you know, the Wolfman grabs the bat and they, they go down. And, you know, it's like, what happened? Like, to me, you know, I didn't know it. I wouldn't kill either one. I want to know where that was in Florida. That's the real question. That's well, the really, question. I want to go to McDougal's house and yes. Yes. Absolutely. No, I love that. You know, that that is a two as a kid is like it's yeah. But the fact that they all existed in the same universe. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's it's funny like the dark universe. I was excited about it. Yeah. I still do because I believe those characters all coexist and that there's Van Helsing and Stranger Van Helsing yeah. still searching for Dracula. Yeah. And you know again, like Dracula is eternal. Yeah. So yeah, he interacted with the monster yeah. and then something happened, the monster froze, Dracula and then, boom, 1941, yeah. we are introduced to Lawrence Tell. Yeah. You know, and so. No, I think that that's going to be absolutely wonderful. That that, the next year is going to be busy for Monster Kids anyway. We have the next figure, the Mego figure, the Jada figures. There are all these different products that are coming out. Funko Pops have new ones coming out from Walgreens. So these are all classic monsters. We're we're in our thrill. Yeah, right no, well, and that's that's what's so funny. Because yeah. when I was a kid, we'd have the Aurora model. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, maybe there was a Bendy, maybe. Yeah, the old but you know, we've now influenced where it's like, well, there's seventeen different versions of the monster. Which one do you want? The the ultimate figure is very interesting because you get the yeah, that face. I love that. But you know, like so for you. I think I'm gonna hedge about it's the Gilmore. But is there is there one that's out there that's like, okay, this is still my white whale. I want to sculpt this. I you know, I believe I've done a Frankenstein, I've done a Gilman. Right. It's always been a toss-up between Bon Chaney, Junior Romero, and Bella Lugosi. I think I'm gonna go with the whole I always love that artistry. Yeah. And the smell. Yeah. yeah. Because there was a lot of pantomime in there with, yeah. with, uh, with Juan Cheney's acting and Craig uh, with his acting. But that makeup, that 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 was just unworldly. You know, the fact that he had the hair and it was the yak hair and it was sin. And then you so, see the shots of where. Uh, 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 oh my gosh. Pierce? Pierce. Jack Pierce, Pierce. 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 is burning the hair. Yes. Like, imagine, like, every day. Yeah. Burn this when it gets to the yeah. So well, that is why he had all of the issues with the channel, because he, not Jenny, from what we read, he's not a very patient man. And here, Jack Pierce is keeping him in the chair for you know eight to ten, twelve hours. We can see why. I wish I had the chain. I wish I could have yeah. just to go. You are the only one that has played yeah. all of it. Yes, except the Gilbert. But all of it. Yeah. It, it was. It, that's one of those treats, though. I, I would love to sculpt it, and maybe I will. I started at one point. Um, it wound up being a prosthetic nose. I never got further than that, but maybe we'll go back to the next. Yeah. And the way he 
He's just in the gloves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gloves the, were a brilliant thing for, for him to do because they were quick to pull on, but you could always see the little buttons in them. And those, yeah, the digit paws. Yeah. There was a lot to love about that. But. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for doing this. Come get coffee, get yes. a sandwich here, and tune into this show every chance you get. These people are top They're the best people in the world. And then you fortunate that like borders right now. And say, with the monster again, this is like level one with friends to make it, teaching them about like entry level monsters. This is how you make Then you get to meet level two, you get master class, Mr. Uh, Michael Roddy here. Mr. Master class. It's like he, he's like level one, he's like high school, you college. Uh, one got accent and he's trying real hard, but it's mush. It could be the body. It could be, could be the going to kick in. Yes. <laughs> but it's like when you when you sit here, like most city I need an R because it's like two months to keep talking and then like well, remember this part and Boris is like the kid his parents don't take him to see the movie. So it was like so what does Boris see the commercial? <laughs> but you want two people love the monsters, best to make it and it's the right they know that. Well that's the thing. One last thing for me is that that is the thing I always love when somebody says if you ask, what did you watch? You have a hundred years of content that is at your fingertips that you could watch anytime you want. We used to have to wait for it. To see an image, you know, now I'm sure we have every image imaginable of every creature. But when I was a kid, it was printed once in a magazine and you cut that out and you yes. cut it and tried to draw it. And then like, well, what's it look like from this side? And you were lucky to see the movie, but you couldn't record it. You know, I used to record it on uh, tape cassettes. So I just hear it over yes. and over again, and that gives you an appreciation for the great music and sounds like But now you have the whole world of Yeah. Go, go forth and enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, we definitely had to work for our well, staying up until 12 midnight when they played it on the Shocker Theater. And I, many times I would sneak my 8 millimeter out and record it off of the TV so I could take the pack. The, you remember the, the cartridges for the pocket flips? I take them apart and put my own movies in there and then redo it. It's like, man, those were those were the, the DVRs before DVRs. But we can go on forever. We do have a little bit more coming up on the show. Um, but thank you, Michael Roddy, again for coming by and helping out. Even with your injured leg, I hope you feel better. Oh, I'll be fine. Boris didn't do that. Boris yeah. did not do that. You're not breaking our guests. Boris did not break the guests. Make sure you guys, make sure you come by here and get a coffee or see yes. you tell them you're sick. And then make sure we see you guys at Pink. Yes. Are you in the area? We're doing the monster kids screening, aren't we? Oh, yeah. We're doing the screening after this. Yeah. Seven. So, I think we're doing a monster kids screen here. So if you want to come get a coffee, you get in the car. Get in the town. Come you call your helicopter. Then if there's a seaplane board, come over and watch the movie. Yes. Like and if you don't like it, boys are going to say, pull you on your get out. Because we'll you don't know pay. Right? Yeah, we'll give you your money. Money back. Money back guarantee. Yes. So that, then boys spit on your shoes. Yes. Pui. 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 The boys, you know, you need some acquire for Yes. So, oh, God, what do you feel about the the, the universal part? The, 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 the epic universe thing? You're going to go open the picture of your mouth? Because he's not going to say nothing. He probably know what he's not saying. Now. If, if they choose to do that, I'll be the first person to do that. Uh-huh. Um, it's going to be 88 all over again. Wait yeah, I'll be three happy years. to do that. Uh, see that in a heartbeat. Because um, I believe those those characters are certainly as, as important and relevant today as they were in 1931. Frankenstein got more depth of character than that, uh, the Jimmy Creeper guy. Right? Frankenstein, more, more like Jimmy Creeper, just Frankenstein. But you know, Frankenstein's more. Yeah. The creature is more like he's deep, like a chick with your skin sensitive, but the kind of creepy in a way. And then super creepy, that guy, you can take the piece off of that. Yeah. Yes. 
And they hit in the head. Yeah, that would not be the same thing if they were bounce of happen. Or sensibility or sense of movement. There was a there was a fluidity. That was her animation yeah, background. Just, yeah, no, but she puts it in the movie. Yeah. And then you combine that with somebody like Rachel Brown. Yeah. It's artistry. It's absolutely yeah. Yeah. Watch your movies. Yeah. But you know the I'm picture sign now. Picture from Black Lagoon will just sneak up on it because that theme music goes. Da, da, da. That that dad's like okay. Oh, yeah, we didn't hear the music. Yeah. Get her the oh, oh. Yeah. Oh. And the Tomas didn't hear that. He probably definitely got yeah. Tomas. The come up. Yeah. It's like he has family, and the creature doesn't mess him up. And he just sitting on the camera. Indiana Jones and the creature. Oh, crossover. There you go. Guaranteed seller. Get off of my place. Get off my class. Stop swimming in my lake. Where's K? Where's K? And on that note, we will let you guys go. This has been uh, a wonderful afternoon at Josie's Cafe for Coffee Shop Wars. Again, check us out on the World Wide Web. And if you're in the area, come down. We'll be here for a few more hours. So thank you again for joining us. And uh, thank you for supporting what we do here. Hey, Monster Kids, thanks for hanging out for another episode of Monster Manor. Do us a favor, though, and hit the bell to get reminders of when we add new content. Subscribe to our channel, and while you're waiting for new shows, check out our website at www.monstermanor1313.com. New content at least every other week, sometimes even more often. Like and follow our Facebook page as well for other content. And lastly, if you want to help us out, check out our Patreon in the Monster Manor with Scott Fenster. Thanks for hanging out until the end. Yes. 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 Yes.